I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Algonac Board of Education for May 21st, 2018 at 7 p.m. If we could rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And the roll call, please. Ray Pribiloff? Here. Andrew Goulet? Here. Charles Bussetel? Here. Heidi Campbell? Here. Heather O'Neill Roberts? Here. Bill Clark? Here. Sharon Stiltner? Here. Thank you. Recognitions and presentation, Mr. Latos. We have a couple tonight. Always a good way to start out a meeting. Uh, the first one tonight, we're going to recognize Terry Wingate. And come on up, Terry. Uh, after many years of service, Terry has got some grandbabies to take care of and got some things on the west side of the state that she's going to go and tend to. But uh, Terry's been a long time bus driver for Algonac Community Schools and now for Dean. And uh, always in Algonac Community Schools, one uh, absolutely love having her. I, I got stories about Terry that go back to when uh, I used to coach a couple years ago. <laughs> and uh, and um, Terry, I always remember the kids, like, you know, and we had middle school track kids, and you can understand how squirrely, you guys wouldn't know anything about how squirrely those kids could be, but um, I always remember the kids were always excited when Terry was driving the bus to and from a track meet, and she had the perfect balance of being able to keep kids under control but at the same time created them with a smile and always was very cordial to them and uh, they certainly appreciate that and as a coach I certainly appreciate that too and everything else you do for the community it's not just driving the bus it's all the events that you attend and all the things that you do and I uh, really appreciate that and on behalf of the board I want to wish you the very best in your retirement and we have a certificate tonight and a bargain with a notable gift card for you. So thank you very much for all your Terry. Yep, congratulations. Thank you. Terry, congratulations. Thank Enjoy. You. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Next recognition is Christina Bottle. Wanted to thank Christy and on behalf of the board, uh, everything that Christy does for the community and certainly was very instrumental in helping the sinking fund pass and we all know the great things that she did with that, but uh, goes much beyond that with Christy. Christy's anything when it comes to sports, be it wrestling or everything else, I mean, I don't know, I think she's cloned sometime because she's here and she's at every place and if you happen to go over to the at Algonquin, she's there, and it just seems like she's everywhere. Uh, but definitely a champion for Algonac Community Schools. She does wonderful things for the community and wonderful things for the students here. So, Christy, I can't thank you enough for everything you did this past few months, but also everything you do every day. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Good job, my dear. Good job. Hey, congratulations. You're a rock star. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Good job. Blood pressure down yet? Not yet. Final recognition tonight. Uh, she is probably on one of those buses at the track meet still, but, uh, and I sent out to the board earlier, Jamie Smith <laughs> was awarded the Distinguished Teacher Award at St. Clair Risa. And for those of you who know Jamie or have been by her classroom or have had a student that's been taught by Jamie, know all the wonderful things that she does and things that she does for her students. It's a great honor because they only have a handful of those per year. Certainly if she pops in here, we'll recognize her. But like I said, they had their middle school uh, track me for the whole day. And those things can tend to go a little bit long. So she knew she'd be a hit or miss. But if she comes in, we'll certainly recognize her. But if you see Jamie, make sure you give her a pat on the back for a good job. Thank you. I can say she's still there with my 
<laughs> oh, and last but not certainly not least, um, every year we have a presentation, budget presentation from the Reese, and I shared that information with you just a little while back. Um, Tracy Recor is here tonight from the RESA to present that information and answer all those difficult questions that you might have for us. So Tracy, I'll sure. turn it over to you. I'd like to thank you for allowing me the opportunity to come in tonight. Um, I just want to take a couple minutes of your time. I won't spend a lot of time going over our budget. I just want to hit a couple of highlights in each one of the um, areas. First is our general fund. Unlike the districts, you receive a, a Section 81 funding, which is your equivalent to your foundation allowance. And we have not received an increase in the past six years, so we've maintained <coughs> our costs, even though we haven't received an increase in our funding in over six years. Uh, and while doing that, we've made consistent efforts to reduce administration and support staff over the years through attrition. The past year, we've several individuals leave in our IT area and we were able to restructure that and eliminate positions there. Uh, also, uh, we restructured our education services department with a departure in that area and replaced a part-time or a full-time position with a part-time position. And then also, um, Dr. Miller moved from his previous position to the superintendent position. We did not fill that administrative role along with the secretary in that department. And in total, that was a savings of approximately $450,000, which then allows us to uh, filter that money back to the locals and different services that we can provide to each of the locals. Uh, one of the largest parts of our general fund budget is our pre-kindergarten program, which is our GSRP, our early on other areas, that allows for uh, approximately 70% of our state and federal services again to the local districts. Um, and then by working with our local districts this past year, one of the other items that we were able to do is we were able to look at the E-rate funding and we were able to uh, process more uh, E-rate equipment, E-rate reimbursement equipment, and you'll see on the handout that I yep. passed out that that accounted for savings of approximately $4,000. For Elginac students, that was another item for the fund. Then the special education fund, we distribute K-18 money to our local districts, and we're able to um, increase that allocation for next year. And that allocation is based on number of pupils and additional cost in your special ed area. So we have to account for all of the districts all together when we look at the distribution. So on that sheet, I've We've placed an estimate of what Elginac's additional reimbursement will be. It'll be a little over 17,000, but again, that's dependent on the number of special ed students that you'll have and what your cost will be there. You can report to the state this year. So it may fluctuate a little yeah. bit. And then the other item that we had in our special ed area was over the past year, the local districts requested additional behavior intervention support, and we were able to hire staff and have them go out and train at the, uh, the classroom. Sorry, I'm having trouble with the connection. Please try to get her. Sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm 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 sor
budget and we're really excited. On April 17th, we received approval from MDE for our Technical Middle College, which is really exciting because those students that attend Tech will have the opportunity, it's similar to the Middle College program that we currently have, so they'll go that 13th year and at the end of that year, they will have their associate's degree at no cost to the district or to themselves. So that's really exciting for the, the tech that's students. And that's over 200 uh, juniors throughout the county who will participate in that or are eligible to participate in that. Mm -hmm. so that's all that I had. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to. The Tech Middle College, um, Dr. Miller was into our uh, County Association Executive Council meeting a couple weeks ago. To explain, there would be um, a certain amount of spots that didn't. That you're, the number you just came out with a couple hundred that are eligible for it. Will there be a, will there be that many spots available for all of those that are eligible, or is there a, a limited number? The numbers that I had were just nearly 200 students. We're still working through the dynamics of it and how that's going to work, but it will be. If you are a junior in the tech program and you're in a program that's eligible, right. then you would have that opportunity. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, you talked about the programs you're adding. Are you cutting any programs? No. Okay. There are no programs that will be cut. Anything else for Tracy? Thank you so much Thank for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Just kind of on a, on a side note to uh, uh, Tracy's presentation and, um, you know, Kevin Miller came out last year and I could tell you as a first year soup and working with Kevin, um, really feel like the direction of the RESA right now is where, where we want it. They work very well with the locals. They provided us with tons of support at this point. Uh, very good to go there. and first question Kevin usually, usually asks at the super intense meeting is what do you guys need in the locals and they certainly work to provide that so appreciate all that they've done and certainly uh, you know Tracy made some points about how they are being very fiscally responsible um, you know by really not replacing some of the positions that people have left and so I think that they're right on par with kind of what we're doing at the locals so just want to helping us a lot Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> and not to bring a sore subject, but years ago, it wasn't. We were downriver, and we didn't get a whole lot of attention all the time. So yeah, yeah. it's no, changed then. Absolutely. I feel like, like I said, Kevin's helped us a bunch. So and adding like a cybersecurity program. That's that's awesome. That's great. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> Consent agenda. Make a motion that the Board of Education approves all consent agenda items, including agenda, minutes, personnel items, treasurer's report, and bills as listed items A through C. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes. Information items, Mr. Latos. Yep, administrative reports. <coughs> Mr. Malrose. Yeah, uh, first thing we had uh, last Friday during the school day, we had our sixth grade orientation. The kids come over and uh, take a tour of the school and ask questions <coughs> and get to eat lunch here. And that's always their favorite part because they get a little bit more options here than the, the, they come here. So they, they like that. Um, but again, they seem to have a good time. And, uh, it's, again, it seems like a good group. So we're excited about having them next year. Uh, we are in the middle of uh, our final round of the NWEA, and just to remind you that we did, uh, uh, because uh, we were concerned kind of the middle round there of uh, scores were stagnant, that we, we threw an incentive at the kids that for their, if they hit the national norm at the grade level, that they would be exempt from their English and their math exams at the end of the year. And that really seems to have lit a fire under them because they, they last, uh, the first two grades here to have taken a day of that, you know, I've been in here, and uh, some of them come close, one away, but a ton of them have hit it, but they are chomping at the bit to get at it, and, and it's, it's definitely made a difference. So I think they'll be uh, very happy with all be able to report uh, next at their next meeting when we get the final scores in. Uh, tomorrow, uh, my parent advisory, um, I'm excited that we're uh, going to have a, a middle school uh, uh, PTSO, uh, which is a long time coming, which is nice that they're very excited about that, and they, they want to take some ownership and, and, and create some more activities for those students. So 
Uh, again, we're meeting tomorrow to kind of finalize that stuff and put some stuff into motion that for next year kind of uh, give more of a voice to those students and give them more activities. Uh, June uh, 5th, we are going to have uh, the Reproductive Health Committee is going to be meeting. It's going to be parents, administrators, uh, and for the middle school health and the high school health that needs to be board approved. Uh, we are going to be following the Michigan model, but uh, we are going to, first before that, it has to go through the Committee of Parents. That's a requirement, so we're doing that on the 5th, and then so hopefully at uh, the board meeting at the end of next month, we'll be presenting for you uh, informational items about that, that curriculum, so hopefully we'll be voting for in July. Um, middle school end of the year uh, field trip to uh, Metro Park will be next Thursday, the 31st. That'll be for 7th and 8th graders. Uh, eighth graders have a trip up to SC4 they do every year. That'll be Monday the 4th. And then uh, again, here at the end of the year, we got uh, our senior awards and graduations on the, on the 8th, and then our 8th grade honors on the 11th, along with the alternative graduations. Thank you. This is LaStage. <coughs> Ramping up MSTEP, I think we officially have one student. Well, we're still yeah. So we have one <laughs> student left to go, and we're starting at NWEA at the elementary and also the DRA2 testing for our final round. And it's giving us some great information so we can hit the ground running next year. This past weekend, our Science Olympia team competed, and we had some really great results. Um, I have to look at my there's so many that it would be hard to um, <clears throat> So for the main team, Kayla Bigelow and Melissa Brackley got sixth place. Um, car Crash Car Expert in Ping Pong Propulsion and Water Rockets, Callie Wells and Nick Poston got sixth. On the alternate team, we had Graf McGrath, Ian Avers, and Thomas Avers got second. On um, Arthropods and whether or not Nevaeh Hale took second in, wait, Nevaeh Hale took second place in arthropods. Izzy Diebel took second place in both arthropods and whether or not. And Audrey Bendit and Aubrey Manners took first place in the ping pong propulsion. And also, I think we had 16 teams total, and 11 of those teams were coached by Algonquin teachers, so um, they had a great time doing it, but they're definitely looking for some more uh, parents to help out, at least with some of the events next year. But they, they do, these kids practice at least once a week for a very long time, so it's like probably January at least, and some teams even start before. So, uh, and Ryan, he coaches too, so he knows how much it is. And I think Melissa's coached in the past, so it's a big undertaking. So that's just a big thing that the teachers do take on. Um, Mrs. Tavares entered our kids into a sturgeon art contest, the fifth grade students. They were able to provide some drawings of you know, sturgeons and their habitat and the food web. And the prize could be a class trip to um, the sturgeon festival on June 1st, where they get to go on uh, the Huron Lady, I was gonna say the ferry. And they get a quick tour, and uh, luckily, well, every one of our kids that submitted was chosen to go. So then I had to call Lisa Merlot in a panic because I already have two field trips on June 1st, and I thought she was going to say there's no way. But she put me on speakerphone, and her and the drivers worked it out, and we were able to go. So our fifth graders will be gone on that day. We'll have third graders going to Greenfield Village, and we have second graders. Oh yeah, the, the split's going. Now we have um, second graders doing their community field trip, so it's gonna be a pretty busy day that day. Um, and those are just the major things that are going on. There's a lot of fun day-to-day -day things going on for the end of our school year. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Sanders. purchased a couple of new pieces of playground equipment that are currently on the playground. So new balance beam on the kindergarten side and these steps, they're called lily pads on the first grade side, which the first graders tell me there are rules to that already. Apparently they have that up there. <laughs> um, we just went through teacher appreciation. Thank you to the board uh, from all of our schools for the great uh, cookies and fruit. It was really nice. Our PTA 
PTO did a great job, all of our PTOs did a great job putting on lunches. Um, parents did a really great job with that, so it went really well. Uh, this week's really busy at Millside. We have the Muskrat Dash on Wednesday, so if you're around Wednesday morning and want to come walk with us, we'll be walking all morning long between Millside and Algonquin in the bus loop. That's the big PTO fundraiser. And Thursday is Millside's Leadership Day, so come on out and the kids will teach you about the seven habits as well as showcase all their ways that they're leaders in their school. We also have our hot dog roast that day, so if you're in the mood for one of these hot dogs, come on over, we have that going on. Uh, kindergarten went to Good Ol's uh, County Park on Friday last week. Beautiful weather day for them, they had a great time. And this Friday, first graders will go on their field trip to Upland Hills Farm. And kindergarten is counting down with a letter of the day. So today was J joke day. I heard an awful lot of kindergarten jokes. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the curriculum side, we've been, these we've been testing this past month. All buildings are testing, all looking at that. Tomorrow, the 712 math committee will meet. They're aligning some of their standards and taking a look at where they're taught, especially in the pre algebra, algebra, and geometry, how those are divided up. Um, the high school and middle school math teachers did request that meeting, so they've got some ideas that they would like to be working on, I'll bring to you. And it's that time of year where we're collecting all of our end of the year data and we'll be forming um, a committee asking for stakeholders from not only within the district, but outside of the district when we start looking at our district improvement plan, what, where do we need to go and what do we need to be doing. So once we have all that data in hand, we'll be looking at setting a date to have everybody come together and make sure we're going in the right direction. Thank you. Mr. Bishop. Good evening. Uh, lots of things happening at Point Trundle this uh, past month. So preschool is officially out uh, for the season. And so their graduation will take place here at the high school at the lecture hall on Wednesday at 6.30. So if you're available and you want to hear some fun songs and probably some fun jokes, <laughs> stop in. It's always a good time. Uh, with that being said, we are gearing up for our summer curriculum, our uh, first year of the kindergarten. So this week and next week I'll be working with the staff that will be teaching that and trying to finalize some of the curriculum that we've put together um, for that particular program. Uh, beyond the kindergarten, the other preschool classes are also working together um, on the curriculum that's been used in the past uh, for summer preschool programs, which is eight weeks. Um, speaking of summer, we still have um, opportunities for enrollment. Uh, we have latchkey availability, uh, daycare, infants and toddlers don't re-register, and we have a few <coughs> preschool and the kindergarten slots left. Um, and we've seen a pretty decent turnout so far, and I think there's been more probably last week and today that have voted through, so we're gonna add those into the roster also. Um, I'm currently working with uh, Becky from RESA to set up a fingerprinting fair, because that sounds fun, right? Um, the state, the federal law has changed, and we've talked about this a little bit, forcing the state to change the requirements for anybody that works in early ed. So instead of just the one set of prints that we get from RESA, new applicants will now be required the set of prints from RESA, additional, uh, they'll have to have a Morpho Trust uh, set of papers, which is a comprehensive background check. Uh, it's a big fancy word, but I'm not really sure what is in depth, I think it goes beyond the state level. Um, but there's some language where if somebody's lived out of state, you have to contact that state, sort of like the iChat system. So the components are a little um, a little vague to me, other, but it's a requirement now, so we're gonna have to do that. Um, everybody has until the end of the fall in the entire state to be re-fingerprinted. And once they are, they're good for five years, and then staff will have to be re-fingerprinted re every five years thereafter. So unlike the school code, where it's just a one-time deal, um, every five years, the staff will have to uh, be fingerprinted. <clears throat> I think the cost was $65 per person. So the good thing is the district has two different licensed facilities. So each facility will receive, from my understanding, 16 vouchers. So that'll cover most of us, but it, it really includes more than just the Point Tremble staff. Um, it's, it's going to include probably speech, I think that's sort of up in the air at this point, but that falls under RISA, our custodian. Um, the bus drivers, we just found out, are exempt. So we were thinking that the bus drivers that were transporting the GSRP students 
were going to also have to be fingerprinted, but the state uh, MD came back and said that that's not the case at this, at this time. Um, so that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, we are planning for our biannual PD day for June 15th, and so I'll be working on some new requirements from these law changes as far as uh, PD requirements that touch on emergency preparedness, and I know we've been focusing <coughs> a lot on that. So having the ALICE training, I'm going to tie components of that right into that PD training to keep it fresh for everybody, just, uh, just in case you can't be too cautious. Um, and lastly, um, so we received some really good news. Last year I had applied for um, a grant opportunity that was for up to $5,000, and I really tried to spend all $5,000, but I could only come up with $4,480 worth of things that I really felt like we needed. Um, the grant was through Great Start to Quality, which is what the program is rated for their stars. And so that money was allocated for um, programs across the state. And what happened is they decided to give that money to programs who had no star or low stars in the hopes that they would have more stars like us instead of maybe benefiting the programs that have already jumped through all the hoops and have you know, done an outstanding job. So that being said, we were denied. I received uh, confirmation from our consultant and then a mailing that we received $4,480. And instead of receiving a check, they gave us a voucher for Kaplan learning. Uh, so we ordered $4,480 to the dollar <laughs> of <laughs> items with free shipping and no tax. And so that is a great benefit to the programs across the board, including a lot of gym and outdoor um, items that probably would otherwise cost the district um, a lot of money. So we're pretty excited about that. Hopefully it'll be here in the next couple weeks and we'll get it ready for summer. That's all I have. Board reports? Just, yeah, just to note the muskrat scramble is uh, the in its 15th year and that's gonna be held uh, Saturday, June 9th at the St. Clair Golf Club. Uh, the teams are filling up nicely. I'm hoping for a sellout. Uh, there's always dinner tickets available, and those are $35 a piece. If anybody would like to attend, just see me and we'll get it taken care of. Anyone else? Yeah, I got a couple things. Um, number one, I personally would like to thank Christy. I mean, I watched her on Facebook time and time again being blasted and she stuck to her guns, just put out the information that needed to be put out. So I really honestly think uh, the biggest reason that this thing passed was sitting in that chair right there. So I just want to say thank you from all of us, from the kids, teachers, everybody. Just one great job. Um, number two, by the end of the year, um, the end of the school year, it looks like we might have up to five Eagle Scouts walking the hallways of Algonac High School. Wonderful. And I don't think we've ever had five Eagle Scouts in this school, so. That's awesome. Other than that, that's about it. Okay. Okay. Visitors, any requests? We have one, Mr. Ken Nickel. That's okay. To those of you who um, are not familiar with me nor who am I've had the privilege of meeting, my name is Ken Nickel. I am currently the superintendent of Yale Public Schools. Christy, we should have carpooled here tonight um, because if you came from the track meet, uh, I saw the uh, muskrats out there on our junior high uh, track and field. That's where I came from as well this evening. Um, before I, I define my purpose here tonight, I, I do want to reflect on a few things. Um, as superintendent, I get to see the board meetings from where Mr. Latos is sitting. And uh, it's, it's very encouraging uh, to see uh, uh, different communities and how they operate. Uh, number one observation, I'm going to come here much more often if Al's going to hug me. <laughs> That's all I saw was Al's out here hugging everybody, which is awesome. <laughs> Second observation, I, I really commend your, your district for continuing to pursue uh, what's best for kids' interest in the sinking fund, and, I, and three, three strikes is out, but it's also a charm. And uh, I love to hear the, the uh, uh, attempts and efforts by the community members to do that. 
we uh, uh, also had a sinking fund pass, and uh, at this particular time, we are in the second cycle, uh, of, uh, in the first year of the second cycle of the sinking fund, and we just can't do the things that we need to do on the budget we have. And so uh, the community uh, support is just amazing in that regard. Um, and I can also attest that your outstanding teacher was on, uh, on duty because uh, when I left, she was uh, right near the uh, long jump. So, uh, um, as I indicated, my name is Ken Nichol, and I'm currently running for the uh, state representative, 81st district, um, as a Republican candidate. Um, I've been a 25-year resident of St. Clair County. Um, I uh, moved here with my wife, and we built a house. And then, consequently, shortly after that, we built a home. And, and we've raised three children uh, at that uh, site up in Lynn Township. Um, very uh, pleased to say two of them have been valedictorians, and the number three one feels like Atlas right now holding the world up. He's an 11th grader with a four point, so <laughs> Aiden, if you hear me, God bless you. Um, the uh, likenesses between the Algonac community and the Yale community are very similar. Um, I can go back to the dates of uh, the uh, beginnings of the Blue Water Area Conference when we established the various uh, teams that were going to be part of this academic, um, extracurricular, and athletic league. And uh, Algonac, Yale, and a lot of those districts that are in the BWAC are very similar. They, they have one thing in common, strong, close-knit, tight communities. And that's what uh, was uh, the allure for my wife and I when we moved up here first uh, 25 years ago. My purpose here is, is really twofold. It's to uh, build an ongoing rapport. I've worked with Al for, for a lot of years, um, and uh, he and I get along, and, and I think we have very similar mindsets. Um, the second thing is I want to put a, a face with a name. Uh, a lot of times uh, uh, you'll, you'll find that uh, uh, name recognition is, is one thing, but if, if you can see the uh, actual merit behind it, I, I think it's more important. You will find that I'm not a politician. That is the furthest thing that from, from the definition of who I am. Um, but you will, you will hear a few things in a moment that tell, me what, tell you what I am. First and foremost, I'm an educator. Uh, I've been educated for over 30 years. Um, I feel like I've done the Henry Ford approach. I've built the car from every level. <coughs> I've been a teacher. I've been a coach. I've been an assistant principal. I've been an athletic director. And yes, Mr. Melrose, I've been a high school principal as well. And then finally, the last jump uh, as a superintendent. Hard to believe that uh, I'm currently the longest uh, seated superintendent in St. Clair County. Um, uh, it, it's just a, probably a fancy way of saying I'm really old. Um, I, I have eight years in the seat. Um, and I've enjoyed every moment of it because I get the opportunity to work with uh, seven uh, outstanding people whose mission is everything about kids. Um, I think, without a doubt, you, you would guess that I'm an advocate for kids, and, and without a doubt, that is certainly who I am. Um, but I think it needs to go to the next level, and the way I look at it is if I'm blessed to, to have the nod for the candidacy in the August primary, I'm going to be able to take that message to the next level because our, we, we need to make certain that education is a priority and more importantly, fund it. I am very, very heartened this year to see the, the proposed budgets across all three uh, planes, the House, Senate, and Governor are very, very similar in that uh, out of uh, formula districts, which includes Algonac, Yale, um, are going to receive uh, anticipated about $240 per student. That is certainly long, long overdue. Uh, five years ago, when we were reduced by $470 per student, we were just like you. We scrambled. We cut, 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 cut. And that's no way uh, to, to do uh, uh, and operate uh, and do things, good things for kids. So yeah, I, I want to give our students in the state of Michigan a much needed voice. More importantly, I want to give our students here in St. Clair County a much needed voice in Lansing. Um, I've been in Yale for 19 years. Um, eight, as I indicated, uh, in the superintendency. Um, I oversee, uh, with the collaborative effort of my Board of Education, a budget of nearly $18 million. Um, and, and we do have fund equity and, and fund balance, and we have uh, maintained about 11%. Uh, and, and so we've been very, very proud of that. Um, more importantly, I'm proud that we put out a good product. 
Uh, Mr. Melrose, soon I, I saw on the marquee that you guys are going to have your graduation. We had ours yesterday. And uh, I, there's no prouder moment for, uh, as a superintendent, Board of Education, and community members to see uh, that product walk across the stage. I'm very mindful and, and respectful of your time. I'm just going to give you the quick Reader's <coughs> Digest version of, again, who I am and what I'm about. So I'm very active in our community in addition to being involved in schools. I'm a member of Sacred Heart Church. I'm a Knights of Columbus member of 8710. I'm a third degree. Um, there's uh, no question that I, I give back to the community that has given to me and my family. Um, I, I listen to a lot of rhetoric as it relates to the political campaign and people talk about a lot of different things. And, and I narrow the field to just a few items. Uh, one is infrastructure, but infrastructure goes so much beyond bridges and roads and things. It goes to people. This educational institution is infrastructure, and, and we need to make certain that we, we support it, and, and that's important. Um, your police, fire, EMT, that's infrastructure, and we, we need to make certain that we give them the tools so they can serve and protect. Um, this area is very, very uh, uh, proud of their natural uh, resources and it certainly <coughs> defines in a lot of ways uh, who Algonac is. As a matter of fact, I learned how to duck hunt down here <laughs> in the marshes. So I, I certainly uh, uh, agree that we want to make sure we protect our natural resources. And then lastly, local control. The seven member panel that are here tonight as board members, you know what is best for this district and I think we need to continue giving local control back. So beyond that, I, I don't come with any promises. Uh, I, again, I'm not a politician. The only promise I, I give to you if, if I'm blessed to uh, support and represent the 81st District and consequently you, um, I will work very, very hard to make sure that we improve the lives uh, and quality of St. Clair County and those constituents that, that reside here. Thank you very much, Tony. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Sure, if you want to. Well, I accidentally skipped Al for a superintendent's report. <laughs> He's pretty upset about it, so we're going to go back a little bit. <laughs> I know, I mean, look at this poor guy. So it's, we're going to go back and let, <laughs> let him do it because... Uh, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll be brief then. <laughs> Andy must have something going on tonight because I don't know. Hockey night in Canada, yeah. come on. All right. Uh, first off, I uh, have a couple level one certifications from MASB tonight. Uh, Phil Clark. Thank you. Congratulations, sir. And Heather Arneal. Congratulations. Andy says he's got one coming too, but he, there's some discrepancy uh, out there on the checks, level two. Checks in the mail. Checks probably. in the mail. <laughs> right yeah. Yeah. Um, just a couple things follow up from last meeting. Um, we had the two young men here talking about the bass fishing team and uh, we've given them the okay to go ahead and register and checked out everything in terms of legalities and things that the school's liable for and um, all checks out to be a good thing. Hopefully they follow through with it. I thought it was a kind of a neat idea. Um, again, no cost to the school, but certainly they'll be able to carry the Algonac name out there. So. <laughs> Um, I think they got something coming up real quick here too because theirs was pretty time sensitive. So uh, I'll keep you posted and maybe get them back in here and they can tell you about their experience with that. Uh, indicated that after uh, the day after the sinking fund, I did meet with our construction manager, Chip Hendrick, um, to talk a little bit about some timelines. And, you know, it, it's a situation where you get something like that passed and you get very excited and obviously we're passionate about the projects that we have and that are coming um but at the same point we don't have any money yet because that that's not coming until the end of the summer or early fall um so that's one little drawback um the second thing is is you know obviously when we look at prioritizing what it is that we're going to take care of first i don't think anyone would argue that we need to get a roof on this high school um, the issue with that is we're in May and a lot of the roofing companies that are equipped to do a roof like this are already booked for the summer. So when we started talking to Chip and started to try to find some information about, you know, you run into this thing of it's September before you can get someone out here and they have a crane, they have 30 guys running around on the roof, it's probably not ideal 
in September when the school year starts. So we're looking at some things that will hopefully bridge the gap between now and next summer, early next summer. Um, what, obviously the bid process is lengthy. We have to go out for a bid and you know put that out so uh, in order to select a company. So I, I guess I'm learning patience in this whole process. I mean, I want things done. I think I, like everybody, you want something done instantly and I, it's just not how it works education everything seems to move a little bit slower and I guess it's good it's the checks and balances of what keeps us honest but at the same point um, I want to run but it, it's coming so I will keep you um, we're gonna continue to meet with him because we do have some preliminary work that we'll have to do like I said getting a bid together and getting it out there to make sure that we secure that um, like I said, but given the choice between having guys doing a roof in September and October while we're in <coughs> session, I just don't think that makes very good sense at this point. So, um, but I'll keep you posted. Are we going to be firing up that infamous facilities committee that I've been sitting on? Yeah, yeah, we're going to actually we are. <laughs> we're, you, you dust off, dust off, yeah, <laughs> dust off the folder. Yet. Yeah, <laughs> we, we can actually talk about some things now. Absolutely. Of people stepping through the roof. Yeah. Um, just wanted to give you an update. I got an email from Michelle Carrier. Uh, Michelle was off this past year on leave. Um, she has requested as per the contract a, a second year of leave while she's out. She's out uh, taking care of her uh, child, young child and wants to make sure that um, she still loves Algonac. She said sent me a nice email and requested that she could extend that leave by one year. So. I, you know with obviously following the contract her, her letter was within the timeline she's a great teacher love to have her back hopefully next year she comes back to us so she's still uh still with us here in Algonac but I wanted to inform you of that um last but certainly not least tonight um as you saw from my emails uh, Doug Bishop has uh, accepted a position uh, out in Port Huron at the YMCA, good good opportunity for Doug. And I don't have to tell you guys, you guys have heard throughout the year the things that Doug's done to get our program uh, in the great spot that it currently sits in. Um, early child care is a real, uh, it, it, it's kind of an interesting thing when you have to replace a director and, and the steps that you have to go through to replace it's like, you probably could, I think you could probably be president with less paperwork, but um, Doug has, after meeting with Doug, he is, he volunteered to come in and make sure that that transition goes smooth. Um, my first question for Doug is, do we have somebody over there right now that is qualified and ready? And Susan Stringer sits directly across from him tonight, and uh, Susan will be our interim um, for filling that position at this point. Susan does meet the qualifications. Um, we have posted the position as well. And so my plan is let the dust settle. We'll, we'll kind of get somebody involved in the spot where they understand the day-to-day -day procedures. And then at least at that point, um, we can make some decisions at the end once the school year is done about what direction we want to go in with that. Um, but Susan's been there for how long, Susan? 15 years so she understands what the, what goes on over there and uh, certainly has been a good team player over there for many years so she's ready to step in and so we'll, we'll um, move on and hopefully have a seamless transition but I'd like to thank Doug for everything he's done to put us in the position that we're in certainly miss you and I really appreciate all you've done so thank you very much Doug. Good job. Thank you very much. Yep. And I think that's about all except for the fact that I did want to point out, uh, Ken, I appreciate you coming out tonight. Um, <clears throat> the, the one thing, and Ken and I do go back quite a ways uh, in terms of educationally work, and we used to work very closely with Yale on a lot of initiatives. And um, Ken, I, I was there when Ken was principal, and we did a lot together. But Ken is as advertised. He's not a politician. Um, he, he, is the, he is the kind of person that when it comes down to who will speak on behalf of our kids and who will champion our kids, it's going to be Ken. So uh, certainly appreciate you coming down and sharing that with the board tonight, and uh, good luck to you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. That's all. That's all. Time. Time. Action items. Transportation contract. Okay, we have provided the board with the detailed transportation RFP results.
we received three bids, um, and even though all the bids were close, um, we eliminated <coughs> one bidder due to performance, financial conditions, and incomplete bidding. Um, this left us with a 1%, less than 1% cost differential between our current provider, Dean Transportation, and per student. Um, after we, we requested for, uh, the repair parts um, that Dean has provided on Algonac buses in the past five years and determined that replacing these parts could be, um, it could have high cost potential. So with that. Because, um, because first student only covers the first amount and then the district would be responsible for pass that, is that correct? No, they, any part that needs to be replaced on Algonac buses, and our buses range from 2007 to 2013, they're identical. We have to pay for any parts over $1,500. Okay, so pretty much everything. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much so, everything. And, and then I asked for a list of, well, what are parts that are fifteen hundred dollars and over, so he provided that as well. Yeah, so, uh, is that a comprehensive list? Do you think it just said a sample? Well, I mean, I said just give me. I don't know. You know, I know an engine, or yeah. but those fuel injectors. <laughs> when you look at that, yeah. you know, I know. Was well, ninety grand of stuff, it, right? Yeah, there. yeah. In in the fuel injectors, those were, you know, pretty high. But those costs. So, um, with this unknown variable of cost. Um, that leads us to recommend our current transportation provider, Dean Transportation. And and I just uh, in addition to that, and I and I, you know, the breakdown is the breakdown, and you guys can see the numbers. But I can say in our five years that we've had with Dean, um, in terms of service, in terms of the, the quality of people that they hire, and certainly the ones that they inherited from us, um, you can't get better people and, and when you need a question answered and you call Dean you talk to Patrick Dean or Kelly Dean who own the place and they, and they are uh, they're great it's been a great partnership working with them um, I think that our drivers over there would tell you the same if you talk to them that they get treated pretty well over there and um, it's just been like I said it's been a good relationship we've never missed a field trip we've never missed a sporting event We've never missed a route, and I did <coughs> check around and I, and I talked and Ken probably could vouch for me, um, talked to some superintendents in the area, and when it comes time some mornings when school comes around, they might not be running a bus route because we're that short in this area on drivers and on subs. And, um, so again, after crunching the numbers with Dorothy and as close as the numbers are, um, I feel very comfortable continuing on with Dean as our, our provider. You might want to mention too from the opening of school last year that we never <laughs> received one call from a parent yeah. or anyone yeah. that there was a problem with busing right. that day. And on a first, first, day, yeah, of first day of school is that and my first day is monumental. A, yeah <laughs> and especially your first day as a superintendent of school is that that's a <laughs> That's a one one less headache you don't have to worry about, and they do. And in the nice part about that too, Sharon, is that that's that goes on throughout the year too. I don't. I I can tell you, I get phone calls about crazy things all the time. I have not got a phone call this year about something that's happened that Dean's done wrong or that there there's been an issue with the driver. It's been. Um, and I know bus driver or uh, board members also are privy to some of those emails that everybody gets and there weren't any this yeah, year either, right, so right. that was really it was surprisingly yeah. dull yeah. <laughs> you know, there was nothing going on well and the, the thoroughness and i have a first-hand experience with last year uh, my wife and i hosted a foreign exchange student from spain <clears throat> the second day he was at our house the the uh his the driver on our route called our house to make sure he was there and what needed to go on and to make sure and let him know she'd be picking him up and stuff, which is pretty neat. And this year, uh, this fall, we're going to host two foreign exchanges, one for a semester and one for the whole year. Um, Paula from Germany will be with us for the first semester, and Carolina from Italy will be with us for the whole year. 
So I have their paperwork from, from their countries and their schools and everything, and I turned it into student service offices here so they could get them, get them put in the system so they can be like preliminarily scheduled so they don't end up like the poor kid that I had last year. He showed up and then they had to fit him in wherever they could. About three days after I turned that paperwork in, and Melinda got it entered in, whatever, the supervisor over at the bus garage. So um, uh, I, we have uh, Paula uh, here. Uh, you know, uh, we're going to be picking her up. I'm like, you know, we'll uh, make sure the driver stops and picks her up. And I'm <coughs> like, well, she won't be here till August, but you know, but I mean, that's like very forward thinking. It, you know, that's good customer service. So I, I hear you. Well, it's it's hard to figure out whether we're saving money or we're losing money because i mean you figure out everything that we would need to run the buses this is one of those things once you decide to do it you're not going to go back we no. can't afford to go out and buy eight more buses right you know to to support our our things so and just the price of gas. I mean, somebody drives a plane into another skyscraper. There goes probably another ninety thousand dollars increase just in gas. But we pay the fuel separate from the need. Oh yeah, I know. But I mean, it's just one of those added things. Yeah, but if we weren't, if we were doing it ourselves, that would be another ninety thousand dollars added to our, our budget. Um, it's just you know. It's one of those things, once you decide to do it, you're kind of stuck with it. You just hope to, that you can keep the prices down. I was surprised we got three bids. Um, I definitely agree with the one bid. He was scary. Um, so I have no problems with Dean. Um, I know the first year was kind of rough. They had to learn the routes and everything else. But since then, they've seen like they've done service well. Mm -hmm. They're within 1%. I like the idea of not having to pay for repairs. So that's my opinion. So we need a motion. Make a motion that the Board of Education approves Dean Transportation as the Algonac Community School Student Transportation Provider beginning <coughs> in the 2018-19 school year for a period of five years based on the April 1st or April 16th, 2018 RFP bid pricing attached. Support. It's been moved to support. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. That passes. Resolution for the reset budget. I'll make a motion that the Board of Education, having received and reviewed the proposed St. Clair County RESA budget for 2018-2019, adopts the resolution as presented, expressing its support of the proposed budget. The complete copy of the resolution will be with the minutes. Support. support. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. Hi. Any opposed? That passes. <coughs> Resolution set to public hearing for the 2018-2019 budget. I'll make a motion that the Board of Education approves the resolution as presented, setting the date and time for the public hearing on the proposed 2018-2019 budget for Monday, June 25th, 2018 at 6.15 p.m. in the Algonac Junior Senior High School with notice of the public hearing to be published as required by law. A complete copy of the resolution shall be attached to the original of these minutes. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Typically have that hearing uh, just prior to the regular uh, June school board meeting. This is, that's the date of that meeting, too. Any other? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> that passes. Administrative contracts. I'll make a motion that the Board of Education approves a one-year extension of the current two-year contracts for the administrators Ryan Melrose, Brooklyn Stage, Fitch Landrum, and Melissa Hanners for the period of July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2020. Support. It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes. Congratulations, everybody. I'll make a motion that the board goes into 
uh, closed session at 8 p.m. for the purpose of discussing negotiations. Support. Been moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes.